good morning, Mount Olive, and to anyone else who's listening over the internet and over the airwaves. We bring you greetings today in our Lord, Savior, Jesus Christ. We serve a God who is, who is worthy and who is, who is of all our praises. We serve a God who is capable to satisfy and to heal and to minister to all our needs. And for that, we come together and we come to, ra to praise the Lord in spirit and in truth. I'm going to read uh, an opening scripture, then I'm going to turn it over to Deacon Beecham for devotion, and, and then I'll come back. The scripture reads, Come unto me, all ye that are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest unto your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burdens are light. Amen. We'll now have our devotion for the Deacon Beecham. Thank you, it is. Amen. 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 Uh, 
God is good. He works it out. I'm so glad to have uh, Deacon Beecham here today. As I told you last week, uh, likewise, I was happy to have uh, Deacon Clayton here. I have a couple of announcements. Then we will keep moving, I guess. So, announcements for the week. Let us not forget about our weekly uh, meetings. Um, deacons and ministers, we have deacons and ministers meetings on Mondays at 6 p.m. on the main conference line, so let's be mindful of that. Also, uh, we have prayer meeting, Bible study on Wednesday nights at 7 p.m. also on the main conference line. Let's also be mindful not to forget about our uh, Sunday schools on Sunday morning. Yeah. We have Sunday school for the women on Sunday morning at 9.30, and that's on the main conference line. We also have Sunday school for men on Sunday morning at 9.30, and that's on a different conference line. So let's be mindful of those, those things that we have before us and that we will continue to Participate. Though it may be virtually, let's continue to participate because we all become the better when we unite on one accord. Amen? Amen. Amen. Also, we will we are now still streaming via two mediums. One is Facebook Live, which is occurring right now. So if you are listening and looking now, this is one of the mediums. And the next one is YouTube, which is not live. It's to follow after the service. So that, those are the two mediums that we're using right now. Also, let's be mindful of our altar prayer that we have after the invitation to discipleship. Uh, please, ma'am, please, sirs, if you have any prayer requests that you'd like to, uh, for us to pray for, please send them in to uh, a message on Facebook. I will get those as soon as uh, they come in. Last but not least, let's be mindful of our uh, church, family, and the community. Uh, to be mindful of our sick, uh, our shut-in, and our bereaved. Yes. Uh, so let's let's keep those at top of mind so that we can always have those ones on our mind. And I understand that everyone, for the most part, is shut-in now. You know what I mean. Those who, if there were a will and a way to get out, they still could. So let's be mindful of them and let's not forget about them. Amen? Amen. Amen. Those are our announcements for this week. Um, again, if there are any announcements that you would like me to make sure that um, I'm uh, mindful of, please send, uh, let me know those in advance so I can Make sure that we put those announcements up for everybody. Amen. I'm sitting here looking online. Somebody else let me know that. Uh, today is uh, Sister Charlotte Bell's birthday. Amen. Amen. So let's, uh, let's all uh, wish Sister Charlotte Bell a happy birthday. Amen. Happy birthday to you, Sister, Sister Bell. I have mentioned uh, different people's birthdays from time to time uh, while I'm up. Uh, don't get mad at me because I only mention those that I know about. So if you want yours mentioned, I will definitely, if you send me one, say, Pastor, my birthday was last week. I will mention your birthday because I think every day and every birthday ought to be celebrated. So, so. So don't get mad at me if I mention somebody's and I didn't mention yours. It was I did it because I was made aware of it. And if I'm made aware of it, I will definitely let you, I will definitely uh, mention your name. Amen? Amen. Amen. So let's be mindful of that, um, of those things. And let's wish each other a happy birthday and all those things that can keep us uh, with some semblance of natural Yes, right. <laughs> Amen.
like a ship that's tossed and driven at a dying angry sea when the storms of life are raging and the fury falls on me I look up and I wonder why that good thing seemed to pass me by. And I say to my soul, be patient. The Lord will make a way somehow. Oh, the Lord will make a way. When beneath the cross I bow, he will take away each sorrows. Let him have your burdens now. When the load goes down so heavy, the weight is shown upon my brow. There's a sweet relief in knowing the Lord will make a way somehow. I try to do my best in service. I try to live the best I can. And when I choose to do the right thing, evil's present on every hand. I look up and I wonder why. The good times seem to pass me by. Then I say to myself, be patient. Oh, the Lord will make a way somehow. Oh, the Lord will make a way somehow. When beneath the cross I bow. He will take away each sorrows. Let him have your burdens now. Oh, when the load falls down so heavy, the weight is shown upon my brow there's a sweet relief in knowing the Lord will make a way somehow the Lord will make a way somehow Amen. somehow somehow we 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 don't know how we don't know how he's going to do it. We don't know when he's going to do it. But we do have confidence and faith that he will. And so, and so the confidence is just is that he will. Not when it would happen. The confidence is that he will and that he's capable and able to do it. Amen. Let's pray. Our Father and our God, Father, we come right now. Father, we come thank you. We know that you're God, and besides you, there is no other. Father, we come asking, oh God, that you send your Holy Spirit on down. Father, we ask, oh God, that the people see less and less of me and more and more of you. Father, we ask, oh God, that you come and dwell in me and in this building for a while. Give me the words to say that I may be able to expound the words that you have for your people, that they may not fall on unfurled ground, that I may speak with clarity and with power, knowing that you are God, who has never lost a case, knowing that you are God who has never made a mistake. 
So, Father, we come leaning and depending on you. We ask you right now that as we connect to the power source, that the power source sends us power from down from hell on heaven. Father, we ask, oh God, that something may be said, oh God, done, oh God, that may give us something to go from the days, weeks, and months to come, that we may be able to shout hallelujah to know that you are still in the miracle working business. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank God. Amen. Turn with me, turn with me, turn with me, if you will, to, you know what, we don't go here. There are several passages of scriptures, uh, all the same, but there are different, you know how somebody can tell the same story? And you can tell it one way, I can tell it one way, and it, it all has just a little bit of different flavor with it. So here we have in the book of Matthew, verse 9, I mean chapter 9, verses 18 through 26. So you can just write these down, because I don't you don't have to turn to them. We have Mark 5, 22 through 43. And Luke 8, 41 through 56. They're all the same passage of scriptures, just Mark's interpretation and Mark's delivery of writing of it and, and Matthew and Luke, the way they expound on the same passage of scripture. But what I will read um, from an excerpt from a couple of them and Let's go Matthew 9 and 20. And it reads. It says, And behold, a woman which was diseased with an issue of blood 12 years came behind him and touched the hem of his garment. Verse 21. For she said within herself, that's what Matthew says. She said within herself, if I may be but touch his garment, I shall be whole. Amen? Amen. And, and so we will read Luke's version of it. Let's go Luke 8, starting at verse uh, 28, starting at verse 41. And it reads, And he, and, and behold, there came a man named Jairus. And he was a ruler of the synagogue. He fell down at Jesus' feet and besought him that he would come into his house. For he had, for he had had one only daughter, about 12 years of age, and she lay a dying. But as he went, the people thronged him. And a woman having an issue of blood 12 years, which had spent all her living upon physicians, neither could be healed by any came behind him and touched the border of his garment and immediately her issue of blood snatched. And Jesus said, who touched me? When all denied Peter and they were, were, with, were we with him said, Master, the multitude thronged thee and pressed thee. And says thou who touched me? 28 says, 46, and Jesus said, somebody had touched me, for I perceive that virtue is gone out of me. And when the woman saw that she was not hid, 
she came trembling and fell down before him. She declared unto him before all the people that what cause she had touched him and how she was healed immediately. And he said unto her, Daughter, be of good comfort. Thy faith hath made thee whole. Go in peace. Go in peace. Amen. Go in peace. And, 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 and so, and so, if we could use for a subject today, and I probably have a subtopic too, but a touch with a purpose. Amen. A touch with a purpose. A touch with a purpose. Right? Or, 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 or maybe even as a sub thing, what happens when you meet Jesus with expectations and intent? Right? What, what happens? Right? A touch with a purpose. I, 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 I must admit that that so we can be on the same page, I want to make sure that we understand a couple of words here that that as we 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 try to matriculate through this verse, these verses and get an understanding and 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 expound on it. One definition is throng. You know, I looked at I had to look that word up myself, because that's not a word. We we just going around with it. Speaking on a normal basis. I, I, I got thronged. Nobody's speaking that way today. Right? So I said, what does that mean? So I had to look it up. It said, a large, densely packed crowd of people are animals. Right? So, so throng, right? Right? Me, you, you know, it's, it's crowded. It, it's, 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 it's so crowded here we can't even move. We touching each other. I mean, that's throng. So Jesus at the time was being thrown, so many people around him, touching him, not like, not like, because he was like the secret service, right? He could have kept people away from him, but there were so many people around him that he was crowded. People who were touching him that he had no idea who they were, just people bumping up against him, so that's what the word thrones mean. And then there was another word, uh, that I saw that was stanched. I said, stanched? I said, we don't use that word today either. Here it is. It said, to stop and to restrict from a wound. Right? So, so, so here we talk about bleeding. So it just immediately, like, like, that's like if you were, were, were to be cut and they wanted to Stanched it, right? They wanted to stop to restrict the bleeding so that you would no longer bleed. But it says, it, it, it just it said it's the immediately the blood stanched. That it stopped. It was restricted. So here we are talking about a woman who had as the Bible, and I've heard it over and over and over, you know, the woman with the issue of blood, right? right? I don't know, you know, the Bible doesn't say how much blood it was. It had, all it just said is that she bled for 12 years. And I, and I, and it, it doesn't say where she bled from. It don't say how the blood was coming. It just said that it was continuous, that it did not stop for 12 long years. So how many of y'all know that, that the fact that she bled for 12 long years and never died that that was a blessing in itself. Amen. How many of y'all know that, that if you were to bleed every day, most of us, every day for 12 long years, most of us would be dead and gone. So, so, so I, had to, I had to think about that. I said for 12 long years. And, 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 and so bring you up the place. So, and the Bible says that, that she didn't just bleed for 12 long years saying, I just wish my blood would stop, that this blood would stop flowing from me or, or that, it was, that it would cease. The Bible says that she went from doctor to doctor, right? That she went to the physicians. She went to every kind of physician probably known to 
a man, you know, she probably went to the blood specialist, right? She had to go to the regular uh, uh, healer. She went all over the place for 12 long years. And the Bible says she went to so many that she exhausted all of her money. Right? You know how that can be. You know how we can go. Uh, those who have some particular ailments, those of us who are dealing with certain circumstances that we can go from doctor to doctor to doctor and a lot of times to no avail. And I can agree with her. What ends up happening is the only thing that happens is my pocketbook gets a lot lighter. And so she goes, and I can identify with that. How can I get amen in it? I know I'm not the only one who's been there. That you've gone to a doctor, and, and that doctor, you thought they were the expert in that field, and they tried to work it out and work it out, and they did not work it out. And so you had to go to the next doctor and try to see if the next doctor could to, to fix it, fix it, and they couldn't. But that's why they're called practicing. Physicians. They get paid to practice on us. Amen. Because uh, they just guessed the name, right? The last time somebody had a situation like this, uh, this is how I tried to treat it. Not saying that it works every time because every individual is different. And so I looked at it and I said, man, this woman was sick for 12 long years. Which says to me that those of us who have some issues and we've been dealing with it for a couple of months, we just need to be patient. See, this woman was one who exhibited some patience. But it was almost like this woman had been dealing with this issue for a long time and it was almost like she had an aha moment. You know the story. Here it is. Jesus, to frame it, Jesus had been going from town to town, healing the sick and, and, and making the lame to walk and the blind to see. Jesus had been working his miracles. Jesus had been showing the people his results. Jesus was not just faking it. Jesus was saying, come here. You, you, you need to walk, huh? Mm, you are. You can walk. You can see. Uh, you can see. So the word had preceded Jesus, right? The work that he was doing and the success rate that he had, right, right. Now here it is, right. You, you, you. Sometimes, right. You, you, you want to be a part of that. You know, sometimes you're thinking like, ah, uh, well, well, I don't know yet. I'm kind of skeptical, right. But, and, and, but, but maybe by the time that 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 she he had gotten to her town, the success rate and the fame had gotten so great, she had this aha moment said, oh. If he can heal them, if he can uh, make the blind see, if he can make the lame walk, if he can make the dumb speak, if he can raise the dead, surely it doesn't take much. Surely I ain't got to do a whole lot that he can heal me also. So I started to look at that. She said, all right. She said, well, uh, he said, okay. He said, if she can do all that, and, and the Bible says that, that, that while 
a house and work your miracle working power. Amen. Bible says, right? Doesn't say that he said, uh-huh, I'll go. The Bible just said he started going. And as he was going, the crowd went with him. Oh, now here because the crowd went here. How many of y'all know when, when, when something good about to happen, and when, and when, and when, when you know something good, crowds are always winning. So here it is, somebody said, we about to see this Jesus do something else. I, I've been watching him, but he is one that's almost about to die. He's done a little bit of things over here. He's done this, he's done that, but let's see how he can work this one. You know, everybody ain't coming for the same reason. Some people ain't always coming because they believe like you believe. Some people are not always coming because they want to join in. Some folk coming just to see. You know how we are, right? Because if everybody believed and everybody had that kind of faith, we wouldn't have some of the issues that we have today. And so I, I read that and and and. and and one of my friends gave me, said, what's the deal? I said, I just don't understand. How was this woman able to be made whole by touching the hem of his garment? And there were so many other people who were around him. Oh, boy, that was, that, that was like the, the age-old question. Now, like, yeah, everybody else there? And the Bible says that everybody was there and everybody was touching him. Right? So everybody got touched him because he said uh, there were so many people who were crowded that people were touching and bumping into one another. Right? So why? Why didn't these people who were bumping and touching Jesus walk in side by side and, and, and get to touch his, his, his hem, get to touch his clothes, get to touch him? Why were they not just immediately healed? What was so special about this woman with the issue of blood? Why? 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 Why was hers so special? Oh, I'm so glad you asked. I'm so glad you asked that because I, I, I'm thinking all of that you said. Yeah, well, 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 why, why, Pastor? Why was she able to do that? I told you what I said. I said, because she had a touch with a purpose, right? It just wasn't a touch by happenstance, right? It wasn't, it wasn't a touch by glancing or, or, or something like this. This was an intentional touch, right? The Bible says, she said to herself, if I could just touch, if I, if I just, just please let me get through, please let me just touch not a whole lot of them. It don't take a lot. Just touch the heel of his garment. If I could just touch the heel, it don't take much. If I could just do that, I know and I believe in my heart that I would be made whole. Amen. Bible says that as she, as Jesus started walking with the men to his house, getting ready to go heal the daughter who was laying, who as the, doc, as, as the daddy said, was about to die. But here it is, he's walking on his way to Jerry's house. And the Bible says that this woman doesn't speak and say, how large the woman was. It doesn't speak to say anything about her frame. It doesn't see that. But but in the midst of that, the Bible says that she pressed her way through. And in the midst of the crowd, as they were moving, the Bible says she 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 got a touch of the hem of his garment. And so when I thought about that, it it got me because I got messed up. Because to touch the hem of his garments mean that she had to be in a, what? A prayerful state. She had to be down low, right? Because the garment was down low. The garment was not. And she, he wasn't wearing a mini skirt. But it said if she could touch the hem of his garment, the Bible says. So I, I'm assuming that she. 
she was down already, low to the ground. And the Bible says she pressed her way through. If I could use my sanctified imagination, I could see her crawling down low, trying to get through. And finally, she got through and she touched the hem of his garment. And the Bible said that it wasn't like two hours later, or not an hour later, or two years later. The Bible says immediately the problem was solved. I said, oh, help me, Holy Ghost. See, so one thing you got to remember, if you want to get something from Jesus, you got to assume the position. See, number one, you got to assume the position. If you want to get something from Jesus, you got to make your request known. You got to be in a submissive state, believing that what you're about to ask for, that you're going to receive it. I said, okay. Number one, she had assumed the position. And next, the Bible says that uh, after she touched the hem of his garment, uh, uh, the Bible said that, that, that Jesus noticed that when she touched him, uh, that some of his, uh, his power uh, had left him. Uh, isn't that something? That you can touch him and you can be healed, but he also knows when you touch him and what he's given to you. I said, oh, help me, Holy Ghost. I said, ain't that something? Don't you know that, that first of all, you got to assume the position. Uh, and thirdly, I want to let you know that you can't sneak up on God. You can't do the okie doke. You can't do something to him that he don't know that you're doing. Uh, you can't do those kind of requests. All requests have to be made open because he knows it. He knows all about you and he knows what you need and what you want. Amen. I said, okay. So in the midst of her determination, in the midst of all the things that she was doing, the Bible says she was successful and made whole. I, if I could use my sanctified imagination, I could imagine that this woman didn't really want to be noticed. Uh, that she didn't really want people to know that she was out there trying to get to see Jesus. She was trying to, because the Bible says, uh, why his back was turned. So the Bible says that, so that leads me that she came up behind him. It wasn't a front frontal, frontal thing saying, Jesus, Jesus, let me touch your hem. Uh, can you stand for a minute? No, no, no. She tried to do it on the sneak. Right? So she touched him from behind Amen. and tried to get on by her business. Like, don't you know? Don't you know that Jesus is not going to bless you like that and not want you to let everybody else know? Did you know what I said? Sometimes, sometimes we wonder why our situations are the way they are. We like to try to go and do the sneak in the hind and, and, and get blessed by God and don't nobody know that the Lord blessed us but us. Right? We want to keep it to ourselves. But how many of y'all know that the God we serve don't work like that? He wants all the blessings that he gives to you to be exposed. Because the more he does for me, and I tell you about it, the more you start to trust and believe as well. You start to have that kind of faith that I have. You start to think that if he did it for me, he can do it for you. So we've got to let the whole world know. When Jesus, when Jesus, when Jesus does something for us. So that's point number two. We got to let them know. We can't keep it to ourselves. Determine. It says, thy faith has made thee whole. And I'm getting ready to come to a close. Got two more points and we going on. It says, she says that, she said, if I could just touch the hem of his garment. That statement says something. 
it says that she had an expectation from the talk, from, from, from the touch. See, 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 one of the reasons that, that, that some of the prayers that we have and some of the requests that we have to the Lord don't come to fruition is because we don't have an expectation. Right, right. We, we just skip on past it. Some of it, we just do it lip service. Lord, I just, if you do such and such, Lord, will you do this for me? Yeah. Lord, if you do this, I, I promise I'll do that. And, and Lord, will you do this? Lord, will you raise them from the dead? Lord, but well, we don't do that no more because most of us believe that once you're dead, you're dead. We ain't doing that stuff. We just accept it. Right? We ain't doing that. We ain't going to do Right? Hey, and, and, and the Bible, and I believe he's the same today as he was yesterday. He can still do all those things, but the reason that he doesn't do all those things is because our expectations are not there. We don't expect it. So here this woman has an expectation from the touch. She expected it. Right? It, it, it was expectation. She said, if I touch, my expectation is that I will be made whole. Right? So, 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 if, so here's, a, here's a note for you that we've got to start expecting something from Jesus. We've got the Romans um, 12, uh, 15 and 13 says, now, now the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in what? In believing that she may abound in hope through the power of the Holy Ghost. He says, he says, we got to believe it. Right? We can hope all we want to, but once we hope, we got to believe in that hope. Right? I believe that he will do exactly what he said he will do. So here she is, this woman with the official blood saying, I had an expectation. My hope is that he would do exactly what I believe that he could do. And here we come to a close. And at the end it says, and he said unto her, daughter, be thy confident. Thy faith hath made thee whole. Go in peace. Hebrews 11 and 1 says faith. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. Now we hear that, right? 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 We hear that. When we can, most of us can quote that and, and spit that out because we've been hearing that for a long time. Now faith is the substance. So faith faith is, is everything. It, it, is, it is loaded with hope. Faith, faith, the basis of faith is hope. Hope in what? Hope is that hope in not those things that we can see, that we can touch, not those things that are tangible. That's not hope at all. That's not hope. Why well, I got the hope that this that this table gonna stand up right? I know it's got two legs on this side and two legs on that side. Why well, I got the hope for that? Hope is about expecting something that does not seem logical. Right? So, so, so we can see that that's not hope. Right? I, 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 I hope that this will happen. No. It's a fact that it will because it's already been proven. So hope is about uh, believing in something that, that, that I have not seen before. But, but I believe because what? He's Jesus. He can do things that seem impossible to everybody else. I, I, I trust in him, although I cannot see how, I believe and know that he will. Woo! All things are possible if you only believe. I remember that song when I was growing up. It said, I believe that all things are possible. If you would only believe. You, 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 you got to believe. If you believe. He said, he said, if I would have the faith as the green as 
the size of a mustard seed. This little bit about God. You can move mountains. He said, you ain't got to push on the mountain. He said, you can say some words. Speak thou to that mountain. Be thou removed. And it would go away. We, as a people, have been dealing with some hardships for a long time. And we keep trying to work them out on our own. We, 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 we keep trying and we claim to have faith. And we, and we say we have faith, but most of us, our faith is just lip service. And that's why we find ourselves not getting the kind of results like this woman who had the issue of blood did. Uh, uh, in Hebrews 11 and 6, it says, but without faith. Woo! It is impossible to please him. For he that come to God, right? So, so first of all, so that's what I that's let me know that this woman is that he that comes to God must first believe that he is. And so that woman already came. She was pressing her way through. She already came knowing and believing that he was who he claimed to be. Right? It says you got to first believe that he is who he said he is and, and that he is a what? A rewarder. A rewarder of them who diligently seek him. What does that mean? A rewarder. That means that he's going to give you just what you ask for. If you come to him with some confidence, say, hey, Lord, I know who you are. I know what you stand for. I know what you've been doing. I know what you're capable of. I'm coming, and I'm coming bold and saying, Lord, I need a healing right now, and I believe that you can do it. Do it for me right now, Lord. Give it to me right now. I'm expecting. My expectations are great. My hope is in you. I trust and believe in you. Say, so, yeah, yeah. I faith, this woman was great because she diligently seeked them. She went in the midst of the crowd. She was determined to press her way through. She was determined to get what she knew that God was capable of doing. She was not going to let a crowd deter her. She was going to be like Zacchaeus, even though he was short in stature. Zacchaeus said, Jesus is coming by. He said, I, I want to get to see him. And I said, I know I'm too short to get to see him because all these folk are much taller than me because my statue prevents me from seeing over him. He said, but I've got to be determined. I've got to find a way to get to see Jesus. The Bible says that Zacchaeus climbed up in the sycamore tree. He said, i got to see him because nothing will stop me from getting to see my Jesus because he had to make sure that he made a way not only that, I remember the man who was confined to the bed. Uh, his friends had to take him everywhere he went. He wanted to see Jesus. Uh, when it was time to see Jesus, the Bible says that it was so crowded around the house and in the house, and 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 and, and there was no way that this man could get to see Jesus easily with him and his two or four friends. Carry him through the crowd. People weren't just going to part their ways. But the Bible says they were determined. And the Bible says that they went up to the rooftop. And they opened up the top. And they dropped him down right in front of Jesus. I tell you, you've got to be determined. Sometimes you've got to improvise. Ah, uh, You've got to say that nothing will stop me from getting to Jesus. Nothing will deter me from reaching my goal. Uh, uh, nothing will get in my way. I'm determined to get to see Jesus. And this woman was the same. So let's make sure that this pointed faith, this touch that was done by this woman and it's just not any natural touch. Your touch has to have purpose. And that Amen. purpose comes from what you believe. 
Amen. And the faith and desire that you have in him. That if you do this, that he will make everything all right. That's right. Amen. The doors of the church are open. What are you willing to do to get to Jesus? Do you trust him enough? Do you trust him enough? Are your expectations you have expectations for Jesus. Amen. Do you trust that he will meet all of your expectations? Do you? Do you? Do you believe that? And if you believe that, faith, 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 faith. You have the faith inside the muscle seeds. Yeah, yeah. opportunity. Here's your opportunity while the blood runs warm in your veins. Don't let this time pass you by. I don't care how long you've been dealing with your issues. I don't care. I don't care how long you've been dealing with your issues. I don't care if you seem like it's been so long. Our time is not God's time that he can work it out. He can, he will, but if you just trust in him and have the confidence in him that he can solve any situation. So I... I know this to be true. I know this to be factual. There is no doubt in my mind. And because of that, I appeal to you. Those who are out of the ark of safety of the Lord. Those who have not put their trust in him. Those who have not decided to lean and depend on him. Those who have not decided to turn over the reins. I appeal to you today. Let him have his way. Let him be God. Let him do what he said he would do. Let him be your protector. Let him be your healer. Let him be your power source. When you're down, help, let him lift you up. Don't turn the friends. Don't turn the loved ones. Trust in God. Trust him. 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 Yeah, yeah. Count it. Count it all joy. Paul says, I count it all joy when I fall into God's places. I count it because I know that I'm not by myself. I count it all joy because I know those things that come. If it's not, he don't take me out immediately. He's giving it to me to make me stronger, to grow out of that. I know. I know. I know. Can you count all your circumstances? Joy. Can you count it out with joy? Because he's working out a great work within you. You can only know that when you are among the ark of safety. You can only know that and trust in that when you decided to make Jesus your choice. When you decided to give your hand to God and let him lead you every step of the way. You can only be in that state when you make that decision. So I tell you, you can join by love, by Christian experience, over the airways, over the internet. You can you can Facebook me. You can YouTube me. I don't care. There is no time that the Lord is not willing to accept you into his kingdom. Amen. 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 Ours to sin, yours to accept. I don't know if any have come. Uh, but there's plenty of room in our Father's hand. Amen. It is now time for our altar.
past because we know. We know who he is and we know what he does and we know what he's capable of doing. So let's On our prayer request that I can see thus far, I think I see them. There are three. Uh, prayer for uh, Mamie, Mamie Brown for the passing of her husband. We know that he is the lifter of a cloud down. We also have a prayer request for uh, Walter Moorhead Jr. and family, J.B. Billings and family, Patricia Mark and family, and Linda Weatherhead and family. We will pray for them as well. And another one is pray for Deborah Johns for healing, strength, and consciousness. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Our Father and our God, Father, we come right now. Thank you, O oh God, for your word. Thank you, O oh God, for all that you do in spite of all that we don't. Father, we come thanking you for the visitation of your Holy Spirit. We thank you, O God, for visiting us wherever we are. We thank you, O God, for doing all that you have already done. We thank you, O God, for the things that you're about to do. And we thank you, O God, for <clears throat> your daughter, son, Jesus, who died on the cross, who's always mediating for us on our behalf. Thank you, O oh God, for sending him down. Father, we come asking right now, O oh God, that you would pray for and bless the sick and the shut in. Father, we ask, O oh God, that you bless this Mamie Brown for the passing of, that you comfort her in the passing of her husband. Father, we know that Anytime we lose loved ones, that it is never an easy task for those who are left down here who remain. Father, well, we know that you never make any mistakes. We know that you have everything under control. So, Father, in the midst of us being obedient to you and understanding that you are in control, we ask, oh God, that you send your confident spirit down, that you may comfort her in the midst of this loss. That you may send people and loved ones around her, oh God, that may be able to uplift her, to keep her in positive spirits, believing that he is in a better place, that he's gone to be with his maker, because we realize that this place is not our home, that one day we all hope to return to be with you. So, Father, we ask, oh God, that you comfort her in whatever she stands in need of, even late in the midnight hour when, when you and you alone are the only one who's available, that you are there. Father, we are asking, oh God, that you pray for the Walter Moorhead uh, family, Billingsley family, the Martin family, and the Weatherhead family, that whatever they stand in need of, oh God, you know, because you know better than I can ask, oh God, because you know their thoughts. Even without me knowing, oh God. So whatever their thoughts are, whatever they are, because you said you would give us the desires of our hearts. So Father, we ask you right now that you bless all these families and, and give them what they need, that you do what you do. Father, that, because we know that if we expect great things from you, you will deliver great things. So we're expecting, oh God, that you will deliver. And last but not least, oh Father, we have right here the prayer for Sister Deborah Johns. For strength, Father, we know that you are the power source. And so if you need strength, oh God, just uh, allow us to connect to you. 
So you are our source and you will always be that. And, and of consciousness, oh God. You know what she means when she says of consciousness. So we ask, uh, uh, we ask, oh God, that you would do that uh, in the midst of our consciousness. Uh, and so we ask, oh God, that you would do that and keep us confident. And I think there's one more. Is it who? Bottom of the page. Pray for, here it is. Amen. Pray for that you would continue to pray for our church family. This is a standing prayer. I don't know how I missed this because I, these are my people. Keep the Alexander, Abe, and Purvis family also. Uh, Natalia. Natalia and family for the loss of her husband. Here it is again. We know that you are uh, that you are the one who can only comfort, oh God. So we ask, oh God, that you also do the same thing that we talked about for us. Mr. Brown, that you do this for Natalia. That you make sure that she's comforted even late in the midnight hour. Father, when, when times are rough and when nobody's there but her, that you are always available and that you can and you will comfort those who are in need. So Father, we ask, oh God, that you to do that. Well, last but not least, let's pray for the Deacon Thomas and family as he continues to heal. Father, we know that you are in the healing business. We know that all we have to do is believe that we, if we believe even unto death, oh God, that you will do exactly what you said you would do, that you will always work it out. So help us, oh God, to bridle our unbelief that we may trust and depend on you more. Believe it before we ask that you will do exactly what we request of you. These are the many blessings we ask in Jesus' name. We pray, amen, and thank God. Amen. Before I close, I got this list, and I'm going to make sure that I, that I call out this list. Somebody help me out. Mr. Brown, help me out. And I appreciate that. We have Mount Olive Church birthdays in February. Look at you. Look at you. I'm going to say something. I'm going to say y'all name every week. Amen. Um, on February 3rd, February. I'm going to do it yet. I'm going to do it in February. Amen. I'm going to leave it alone. I'm going to start in February. Amen. 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 I'm going to start that in February. It's not February yet. So I was going to do that. I missed January. So those who I missed in January, uh, God bless you. And I'll, and, I'll, and I'll get that list next week. Uh, and I'll say them. The ones in January. And I'll say them, and then I'll start my February that we missed. Amen. I just want to make sure that I got that, because it's still January. So I'm not going to wish y'all happy birthday, but I got the one for February, so y'all might be mad, because I got the list for y'all for February. Amen? Amen. 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 I got the one for the last day in January. <laughs> Amen. 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 But we'll, we will make sure that we, we, we get the rest of those. Because we want to make sure that we are mindful of those things that are important to us. If it's important to you, it's important to us. Amen? Amen. 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 If there's nothing else, it's time to go home. Uh, now unto him that is able to keep you from falling. And to present you fathers before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. To the only wise God, our Savior, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and forever. Amen. Amen. Consider yourself dismissed. Those who are at home, you can start eating immediately. And those who of us who have to leave and get in our cars, we will get us some food too. Amen. Amen.